So you have refinanced one of your buy-to-let properties. Now, how do you put that on QuickBooks? Well, watch this video as I show you how. As the intro suggested, we are now going to look at refinancing your property and how that will be entered into QuickBooks. The first thing I will bring to your attention is that you will be remortgaging your property. Uh, what that means is that you might have a property that was worth £375,000, but then it's gone up in value to £600,000, which shows an increase of £225,000. You may have refinanced that property to ultimately get money out of the equity. Now, there will be a legal fee associated with that of £1,000, which gives you a profit, which is not taxable, but it does need to be shown in the profit and loss account because of the restated uh, financial statements to show this revaluation of 224,000 that now needs to sit on the profit and loss. Again, please do note that that is not taxable, but it does need to be shown now on the profit and loss. Uh, you may find a situation whereby you've got a mortgage redemption of 243750 which is the old mortgage that was in place, and you've got a balance that's due to you now of 206250 and um, with a, basically that will come back to the mortgage of £450,000. Now I'm going to flick between my screens a little, and there is good reason. I want to show you in QuickBooks how things stand. Uh, what I've done is I've clicked onto the reports tab, which is on the left hand corner, left hand side of the navigation pane. Clicked onto reports, and then that will give me then the balance sheet summary, which I'm going to click onto that there. What that has done for me is given me the property value of £375,000, which if I go back now to the previous slide, you'll see the old property value, which is correct. And I've got a debtor as well, credit cards, that's sitting on there of 243750 which does need, indeed need to be adjusted. So we need to take that out. So what happens here is that this balance now needs to be adjusted accordingly, but we can't do it as easy as people might think. So what we're gonna do is tackle the first problem, which is looking at the property value, which I'm sorry for flicking there, but we're gonna to have to put an invoice there for the revalued of that property. So what we're gonna do is go back to QuickBooks and look at that particular one here at 375, and we're gonna click on that property detail right there. What I want to do now is look at that £375,000, which is this one down here, just that one there. And I can see that it's got 123 Main Road and it's got a transaction type of bill there. So I know that, that if I click onto that bill, I can see that the supplier is 123 Main Road. So I need to raise another invoice now to get that valuation up. So what I'm going to do right here is go now, oops. I'm going to go to the left hand side and go to expenses and then suppliers. I'm going to click on expenses, then suppliers. And that's going to go onto there. You'll see that I've got 123 main road. I'm going to click onto that and then go onto new invoice. So I'm going to click onto that there and create bill. And what I want to do now is put in the, uh, the revaluation of the property. Now, what I want to do is basically show the audit trail. So what I want to have right now is to say, okay, if the property was originally valued at £375,000, there is an increased valuation of £225,000. So what I need to do now is show those two transactions in the accounts. Now, Okay, so we've got accounting tools. So accounting tools allows me now to do this revaluation a reserve in here, which you're gonna see as clear as day, hopefully. So click on accounting tools and then go to journal entries. I'm going to go to journal entries and you'll notice that I need to put a date in here and then your journal number is there. That's absolutely fine to leave it as is. So what we're gonna do now is put in there buildings. 
and you'll notice that account will come up straight away. It's buildings and improvements. Click onto that. And I'm going to be increasing the value of that building that we talked about by £225,000. So I need to enter £225,000 just there. And what I'm going to do is put this as a revaluation. Now I can put my revaluation statement as an upload into this, by the way. Um, and you'll notice that I've got name as well. I'm going to leave this in there for now. So I'm going to just do no VAT. And what I'll do underneath that is create a corresponding 225. What I'm going to do is do, call this a profit revaluation. And you'll notice, once I do the spell check on this, um, I need to add the account because it doesn't have an account set up for this. So what I'm going to do is put that in there. The account type, by the way, is got to be an income of sort, but it can't be what you might classify as taxable income. It's a revaluation reserve, but QuickBooks and other systems don't really do this very well. So what we're gonna to have to do is put this as other income and then make sure that it's taken out of the uh, financial statements when we look at the profits and tax. So what we're gonna do is put that as other income and then all the way down is other investment income. Now. You could say it's miscellaneous or investment income, but I'm gonna just leave it as investment income, and then tell the accountant to exclude it when they do their financial year and accounts from the uh, taxable profits. So profit revaluation, I'm gonna keep in there. What I might do is put profit revaluation and one call it main, one, two, three, main road, which is the property or main street, I can't remember what it was, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so I'm gonna click on that, and then click on save and close. So you'll notice now that they, that has happened just there nicely. So I've got the 225,000, which is the revaluation. That's gone in there. It's, I've noticed done the debit, not the credit. So I need to force that again. So profit revaluation is there. It's entered the credit of 225,000 pounds, which is the right thing. Again, I wanna put no VAT on there. And then therefore that journal has now been created. I can then click on the save, wherever that is. Oops. By clicking the X. Now it's got it at the bottom there. It's because I was zooming up, it didn't show it. So I'm just gonna click on that now. Flicking around the screens as I show you. And then I need to click on save. So by clicking on save, I've now created that revaluation reserve. So if I click on X on there, and go back to my reports, and then the balance sheets, you will notice that the property's now got 600,000 pounds. That is a property revaluation right there. What we've got to do is have a look at the mortgage that we're gonna be redeeming, which is a 243,750, which was the original mortgage. And we've got the new mortgage of 450,000 pounds, and then we've got this final transaction, which is 206,250, which is then due to you. So this is a bit of a long job, I have to say. So what we're gonna do in QuickBooks is have a look at a transfer of accounts. And what you can do within this is that there's a plus button and new. So let's click on new right now. And what we're gonna do is go to transfer right here and click onto that. And the first thing we want to do is make sure we've got the right uh, mortgage that we're going to be closing off. So that's Lloyd's that we've got there. And there it is. So we're going to click on that one as a count. And you'll notice it's got 243,750 right there. And what we're going to be doing is transferring funds to this bank account. So we're going to have to do is a reverse really. That's the old balance. So what we're gonna do is do a, let's say it's called a Barclays loan, which we're gonna take. So Barclays is not included. So we're gonna to have to have add Barclays into this. And what we're gonna do is then call this a current liability or non-current liability. So we're gonna call this a non-current liability. And underneath there, we've got long-term borrowings and click on that. And we've got Barclays as a name. So what we're going to do is call this Barclays. And just for simplicity, we're going to call this 123 
main road. And we're going to put that in the description as well. Right, so, and then we'll do save and close. That's now done, created the bank account. You'll see the balance is zero. What we're going to do now is put Lloyd's. And what we've got there is Lloyd's bank is there. So I'm going to click on that one. And you'll notice there's 243,750. So we need to clear that bank account out. So what we need to do is create 243,750. And that will be done on that transaction. What we then do is then do file and new because this is only going to be transferring the 243,750 to clear out the old balance. But we need to get to the new mortgage balance of 450. So what we're going to do is to click on save and new. That's now gone. And if you remember, we created a bank account called Barclays which you'll see one, two, three main roads. So it's just easier to see. And you'll notice it's got a balance now of 243,750. Now what we need to do is transfer funds from that account of the 206,250, which is due to you. So 206,250, oops. Uh, that's a director's loan account, sorry. Director's loan account, which is there. And what we're gonna do is the amount which is going to be 206.250. And then we'll click on save and close. So now that's pretty much done. That's transferred all the loan liabilities of the mortgage to each other. And if we go to reports and balance sheet, we will see now that a direct loan account, there's various balances going on there. We can't do anything about that. We've got the ban the building's value of £600,000, which is the new value, as you remember. And down below here, we've got the Barclays loan, which is £450,000. So now you can see that the balances are all taken care of within QuickBooks. So hopefully that will help you now to understand how to do a revaluation on a property and to enter those transactions into QuickBooks.